A new fossil of an ichthyosaur has soft tissue preserved, and it's unlike anything ever found before, or even in the modern day. This also means that at least some ichthyosaurs were probably a lot stealthier than any tetrapod that has ever returned to the water. So when you're thinking of things like dolphins that have returned to the water, they don't have this. So for starters, it's going to be a Temnodontosaurus, which is this really big ichthyosaur from the early Jurassic. This is before pliosaurs, things like Liopleurodon, had become really common. So the ichthyosaurs were filling a lot of ecospace, including as the largest predators in the oceans. And they would have been fairly voracious. A relative of Temnodontosaurus was Guaijuichthyosaurus from the Triassic. And one measuring about 5 meters long was found to have eaten, or at least it attempted to eat, it might have actually choked on it, another ocean-going reptile, Jinpusaurus, which measured around 4 meters. So they were not predators that would back down from a challenging prey item. The new Temnodontosaurus fossil is just a single flipper. However, it really does help to show part of how they were able to become so successful, and that's because of the soft tissues that have never been found in this grade of detail until now. The fossil shows two features that are totally unique among vertebrates which have returned to the ocean. One is these parallel grooves in the skin that are running down the flipper, and the other is these little tagged-on fleshy bits. Each of these seems to have had a really important purpose, though, and that's because the flipper would have been moving through the water. And fortunately, water is really important to us, meaning we have a lot of programs for simulating water moving over a surface. So it's pretty straightforward to just make a simple model of a wing-like structure, because the flippers basically would have acted like wings in the water, and add grooves to it, or the little tips at the end of it. And that's basically what these researchers did. They were doing that to compare, with and without the grooves or the little bits on the end, how much movement there was in the water. And the water moves less with all of those traits. So importantly, this is just a model, and no model is perfect, but some are useful. And this one seems really useful because that reduced movement means less noise would have been produced by this animal swimming through the water, meaning that Temnodontosaurus would have been stealthy, potentially stealthier than any other active predator in the oceans ever. And the skin flaps did actually help with that too, and really importantly, they were supported by cartilage, which seems like a super, super minor thing, but it's actually really, really neat, because you might think, well, plenty of animals have bones growing in their skin, osteoderms, so doesn't it really matter that this is cartilage? Isn't it just the same process? And no, it's actually not. It's entirely different. Osteoderms, the bones growing in skin like you see in crocodiles, have nothing to do with cartilage. Osteoderms aren't just bony pieces of cartilage which first evolved. It wasn't, oh hey, we have cartilage in the skin and then that's going to grow into bone. No, it's just bone growing in skin with no cartilage present. So this is an entirely novel adaptation to reinforce the skin flaps hanging off the end of the flipper while also maintaining some level of flexibility for controlling the body of the animal when it's swimming through the water. So Temnodontosaurus was a hunter, very well suited to sneaking up on prey. Unfortunately for it, large ichthyosaurs seem to have been replaced by the pliosaurus during the middle and late Jurassic, and that could have been for any number of reasons. Even just something like the climate may be to blame, it doesn't need to be direct competition. However, many of the remaining ichthyosaurs, including things like Ophthalmosaurus seen in the late Jurassic, seem to have been really deep sea hunters. Ophthalmosaurus, for example, had massive eyes, and there is some unpublished data that does suggest that they got the bends, basically decompression sickness from when they were rising up to the surface from great depths, the same kind of things that we see in deep diving whales. And it's not like Temnodontosaurus had a small eye either. So potentially the ichthyosaurs were adapting to deep ocean living very early on, and being able to sneak up on their prey was one of the key adaptations to their success.